Welcome in to Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Live. I'm Patty. I'm a jewelry designer here at Fire Mountain. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make these adorable, trendy daisy hoop earrings. These are so simple to make. They take very few tools, not a lot of skill set. Anyone can do this. So follow along and learn how to do it. Um, it's St. Patrick's Day today, so happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, I thought a little um, spring cheer would be in order. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm looking forward to that. It's such a fun project for me. Um, seed beatings isn't my natural best thing, so I'm having to learn to get really good at seed beating. But wire is my thing. And so these earrings combine seed beads with wire. You don't have to sew them on. And so for me, it's intuitively easier. Um, for you, you might be more used to stitching, so there might be some great things to learn here for you. Okay, well, let's look at the materials in this piece. Let me just pull those aside a little bit and pull in our dish. So you can see we have some different beads here. We have three different colors of seed beads, a blue, a green, and a pink. And then we've got this yellow fire polish bead that's going to be the center of each little daisy flower. And they're kind of in a chain. The chain is made up on this 24 gauge silver para wire. And then we have some silver um, bead hoops that we can bead right onto real easy. And then for a little extra special touch, instead of putting you know, a normal ear wire on there, I decided to use these open shank ear wires. So we'll be using those too. I'll show you how to bead onto those and how to finish them. They really give a little extra personalization to your piece. Before we get started in the project though, make sure and like, share, and subscribe. Become part of our family here on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, and if you want the materials list to make these earrings just like I'll be making them today, just in the comments of this video, just put hashtag PA44. That's, um, let's make things up because I don't know the correct one, like Paul Albert 44. <laughs> and uh, Melissa, our wonderful social media person, will give you a link to the materials list. Um, as well, if you want all the insider information on our specials and um, cool new things that are coming out, new products, sign up for our email newsletter list. Um, you just get it once in a while, just when it's important. And it's really valuable to have if you're a real Fire Mountain person and you love our product. Um, in order to get that newsletter, just say newsletter in the comments here and Melissa will give you the link to sign up for that. Okay. Let's get going. Now make sure and talk to me while I work. I am here live, so I wanna interact with you. It's my favorite part of doing lives is finding out who you are and where you're from. Um, you can tell me a little bit about your experience with seed beads or with wire work or any other jewelry that you wanna chat about. Um, and if you have any questions, drop them in the comments here. We're gonna be listing them on the board and I will answer them for you as soon as I see them. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of the way. And today I'm going to be using what's called a bead mat. So see this little piece of fuzzy material? Um, it's kind of, kind of velvety, there's just a little bit of nap to it. And when I seed bead, this is a really good way to pick the beads up off the mat. Um, I have my little bead scoop um, which is a great way to put them on the mat in an organized way. So I'm just going to scoop some of each of these seed beads out onto the mat. And they'll scatter a little bit, but I can just push them back together like that. And I want to have enough so I don't really have to dip back in. So let's get a few out there. The nice thing about working with the wire to get them on the beading hoops is that you can use the wire just like a needle so you don't have to have a needle. Um, it's easy to pick them up. So we've got some blues, let's get some greens. Maybe I'll just kind of scoop them out this way. That's a little faster. 
and let's get some pinks. We'll come back for more if we need them. And we need a few yellows, so we'll get those. Okay. And I'll just scooch them around a little bit so they stay together. And there we are. Okay. So now I have my materials ready to all just get this started. So the first thing I'll need is my little beading hoop. It's a little round hoop, and if you look at the back side here, one side of the wire is permanently attached to um, this little top element here, and the other side just pops out like that. So you can thread elements onto it, and then when you're done, you can clamp that closed. So we're going to leave that open for now. And then I'm going to grab some of my 24 gauge para wire. It, this is the um, silver plated silver color. And we get a big enough piece here. Let me snip that off. Okay. So I've got my piece of pear wire. It's a couple feet long. I'm feeling like it might be a little bit extra, but I prefer to have a little bit extra. Um, that way I don't run out. So the first thing I'm going to do is middle my wire. Um, when you work with thin wire like this, um, you just grab the ends um, between your thumb and forefinger on one hand, and then you just kind of scooch the wire together until you create a little, whoops, there my seed beads are everywhere. I'm going to fix that. <laughs> that is the fun of live, you guys. I'm trying to do everything in this little space on the camera so you don't miss anything, but unfortunately, Seed beads are finicky creatures. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, so we have middled the wire. So I basically made this bend in the wire, but I left a loop, and I need to leave a little loop. I'm crossing the wire over on itself, and I'm closing up that loop till it gets pretty small. I want a little bit left. Hi to... Linda from Aurora, Colorado, welcome. Becky, Terry, and Christine from California. Welcome everybody, I'm so glad you're here with me today. Okay, so I have my little itty bitty loop left in the middle and I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold that wire away from my mat because I'm gonna keep knocking my seed beads around. And then what I'm gonna do is take this open end of the bead hoop and I'm gonna put it through that little loop at the end of the middle of my wire. And then I'm going to pull that wire closed all the way so I have one wrap, really, of wire around my bead hoop, just like that. And I'm going to pull that kind of toward the end. You can move it around a little bit, but we want it away from this beginning part where it can fall off. Um, let's see. We've got a question here from Christine. Hi, Christine. Let's see, one moment, it's getting translated. I'll come back to it in a second. Um, so we've got this wire looped once around the beading frame. And then we're gonna take one of these little yellow beads, the fire polish beads, and we're going to thread that onto the beading hoop. And we're gonna let it fall against that wrap that's already on there. So we have it like this all the way down there. And that's the center of our first flower. Um, okay, Christine, how long have you been working with seed beads? You know, that's an interesting question, Christine. I'm not the uh, company expert with seed beads. Rose is really that person right now. Um, I have been doing seed beading for a long time, actually. I started out doing seed beading. It was the very first thing I ever did when I did jewelry when I was in my early 20s, so close to 30 years ago. And um, the first thing I ever did was make, make seed bead earrings, little triangles with a fringe that were real popular in the early 90s and the late 80s. And um, then I really got into wire and metal smithing, and I didn't do so much with seed beads. Um, I did a little bit of looming back when, you know, one or two pieces, but really I started seed beading when I started working here at Fire Mountain, which was just a few years ago. 
And so um, I'm more relatively new at it. I do it more than you know a lot of people maybe because it's my job, but um, I'm still learning. So um, working with wire is more comfortable for me, but I'm really, really enjoying learning to sew with seed beads and to loom with seed beads and to all, do all the stitches. It's really fun. Okay, so we've got our yellow bead on. So what I'm gonna do, we've got two tails of wire, one coming out to the right, one coming out, out to the left. My dominant hand is my right. And so I'm gonna pick that as the starting side. Because you're always, each flower that you make, you're gonna start on the same side. So I'm gonna remember my dominant hand is where I'm starting for each color. So I'm gonna take my dominant hand and I'm gonna pick up four pink beads here from the seed bead pile. One, two, three, four. And let them fall down against my piece right above that uh, yellow bead. And then to make the first half of the flower petal, I'm going to clamp the opposite side of the wire here. And I'm gonna gently, out here a little bit, out here an inch or so, arc the wire around. So the pink beads start to form around that yellow bead. It's a little bit different angle than I would normally do it, so be patient with me. Um, on camera is slightly different, so you can really see. So there, you can see that my wire with my pink beads is really snug around the yellow bead, um, which makes up the center. Then I'm going to put my wire through the bead hoop and pull it back to the original side here of my dominant hand. And you can see we have the first half of the first flower. Okay, so then we're going to take the opposite side. So my left hand, I'm gonna pick up four of the pink beads. I use my right hand for everything, but it came from the left side. Um, my, my left hand is really just for decoration. Okay, there's two, three. I'm not ambidextrous in any way. Um, there's three. And four, okay. And I will let those pink beads slide down my wire against where the yellow bead is on the opposite side now. And then again, I'm gonna gently arc my wire out an inch or so around that yellow bead. So it's nice and tight, it's taking up all the slack. Put it through that bead hoop I'll make an absolute mess of my seed beads by the end of this, but I'll still be able to find them. It'll be okay. And there we have our first flower. Isn't that cute? And then we're just gonna do the same thing repeatedly. Let's see, what color do we wanna go with next? On our example, we went pink, blue, green. So I'll do that here. So I'm gonna go back, starting the blue with my dominant hand and pick up four blue beads. One, two, three, four, 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 there it is. And let those fall all the way against um, my bead hoop frame. And before I arc that, I have to have my yellow bead on there. So I'm gonna put my yellow bead on the bead frame. Sorry, I know that's a little hard to see, but I'll show you in a second. Get that little guy on there. Okay, see how it falls down against that first flower? And I've got my four blue beads on there. I'm gonna arc the wire again around the yellow beads so it's nice and snug and all the slack's taken up. Sometimes it takes a little finessing and then it's gonna come back through the bead hoop back to the same side that I started on. And there we have half a blue flower I'll take the other side, get four blue beads. One, two, three, four. And let this fall down against my flowers here on the bead hoop. And then arc that wire snug, snug against 
that yellow bead, take up all the slack, push that through my bead hoop, back to the original side that I started on, just like that. So there we have the first two in our chain of daisies. Isn't that cute? Let's do one more. Um, hi to Deanna from North Carolina. Hi to Elaine. Elaine, I love you. Elaine is our newest jewelry designer here at Fire Mountain. Round of applause. We're very excited about that. Um, you're going to be seeing more of her soon. And uh, Shakita McDonald, welcome, welcome. And Jessica, I wonder if it's our Jessica that is from Fire Mountain. We had a Jessica that um, used to be uh, the stylist here. She used to make these beautiful sets. Um, regardless, welcome, and I'm glad that you're here. OK, so let's pick up some green beads. We're going to get four greens. Look at my seed beads are everywhere. That's OK. One, two, three, four. I still feel like it's easier to have them on this bead mat, even if they spread out a little bit, um, because they don't run away from me. If I try and get them right out of the dish, they tend to kind of, you have to chase them down. But when they're on this bead mat, it's pretty easy to get them on the wire. OK, I've got my four green beads on. I'll put on my yellow bead on my bead frame here. and let that fall against my blue flower that I just made. Arc the wire around, snug it up really nice against that yellow bead, and bring the wire back to that side where I started. <laughs> OK, and let's get four green beads on the other wire. One, two, come back here, one, two, Three, one more, four, okay. And let them fall all the way down. Arc that wire, take up all the slack. That's the hardest part is learning to take up all the slack, but you'll get it really fast. Bring that wire through the beading hoop and back to the other side. And there we have three in the row of daisies. All I'm going to do now is continue this exact same action with the exact same pattern all the way around. And luckily, I knew we were doing this today, and I didn't want you to have to watch me do all of them because it's the same thing. And so I have what's called a step out. So I have one that's almost finished. So I did the first three here, and then I did a couple more sets, and I'm all the way around almost to the end. I've got pink blue, green, and there's just one more pink one to put on here. So let's do that last pink one. Put on my yellow bead and grab four pink beads. One, two, three, four, and let them fall against my bead frame. I'm going to move my mat a little bit. It's getting out of hand. Okay, next I'm going to arc those around just like I did before. Take up all that slack and then bring it back to the other side. And now I'm going to actually finish this wire off by going around one more time, all the way around, and then I'm going to snip that wire, the tail on the side that's finished, with my flash cutter. There we go, almost. OK, and then whenever I snip a tail, I take my chain nose pliers, and I just go around kind of in a circle and squeeze and make sure the tail's tucked in. Then we'll grab up the four pink beads for the other side. One, two, three, four. Um, hi, Jessica. Happy St. Patty's Day, Jessica. Is it St. Me Day? I'm not the right kind of patty. I think it's like a P-A-D-D-Y, but I'll claim it. I'll take it. My, my Irish ancestors will be happy. OK, so I've arced that around the yellow bead with the last of my pink beads. And I'm going to wrap it a couple of times to finish this wire off. And you want a little tail here because it has to go through um, this little hole over here and get clamped down to finish it off. 
So let's go ahead and snip off that tail. And then I'll use my chain nose pliers, go around the little circle, make sure my teals are really nice and clean and tucked in. You don't want anything scratching your skin. And then last, for this part, I'm just going to take my little tail that's left, put it in this little hole on the other side of my bead hoop, and then take my chain nose pliers, and I'm just going to smush it hard. <laughs> So I'll use lots of pressure to smush that down to keep that in place. And if you like, you can use a drop of glue in there um, before you smush it, just a little tiny bit of something like DevCon or GS Hyposamen or something like that. Okay, so the hoop is finished. All we need to do is make the cute little open shank ear wire. And we do that with the same technique. You just lose less wire and you only make two flowers. So let's do that real quick. I'm going to pull off a piece of the wire. And I want enough so I have some ends to work with to wrap with at the end. And I'm going to middle my wire just like I did with the long piece. Grab the two ends between my thumb and forefinger and then just squish those wires together until I get a little loop in the middle. And then I let those wires cross over each other until we get that little itty bitty loop like that. Doesn't need to be very big. And then the open shank ear wire goes in there. So we'll put that, it goes right on the shank part. This gets a little bit tricky. I'll just have to kind of hold it all in place. And I want to get that loop pretty tightened on the shank. And I'm going to kind of hold the ear wire right here because so, it'll fall off the other end until I get a flower on there. So I've got that on there. And I'm just going to put on my yellow bead. And let's do, let's see, I think we did pink and then blue. So let's start with pink. We'll pick up four of the pink beads. And remember, if you like different colors, you can totally pick a different color scheme. You can do them all the same color if you want. Anything that you want to do, you can use a different bead in the middle. You can put a bicone, um, a crystal. You could even put maybe a gemstone bead that has a big enough hole on there. So I've got my four pinks. Let them fall against. Arc my wire around and bring the tail back to the original side there. We've got half my flower. Let's pick up some more pinks. And I'm really holding this ear wire in place so it doesn't fall off until this flower is finished. Okay. And I'm going to arc it around again, nice and snug against that yellow bead. Take up all that slack. If you miss a millimeter or something, it's really going to be okay. But the more you practice, the, the better you'll get at it. See that the ear wire wants to come out. I want to make sure that doesn't come out. Let's see here. This part takes just a little extra finessing because of that reason. I want to make sure all my beads stay on that side before I wrap it. So you guys fall over there. All right. Then I'll go ahead and wrap once and bring it to the opposite side. And there I have my first little flower. Isn't that cute? And then we'll put on another yellow bead. And pick up, what do we decide? Blue for the other one. So pick up four blues. In a minute, I'm going to show you some other um, daisy chain hoops that I've made so you can see some different configurations on different types of hoops. Um, that I feel like are really fun. This is such a trendy style right now. You're seeing it everywhere, these little seed beaded daisies. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to, to bring some to you. Arc my wire around, my yellow bead, bring that back over, pick up four more blue beads on the other side. And it actually goes much faster than this when you're not talking it out and teaching it. So um, this is a quick project but it'll be even quicker if you do it at home. Oops, I almost lost my ear wire. There we are. Oh, 
and this is the bottom. We're only making two daisies here, so I'm going to wrap this first side actually around another time and snip that off here. You could do it later, but this is cleaner. And then I'm going to arc my wire with my other blue beads on there around my center bead, take up all the slack, and then I'm going to wrap that twice to finish that off and snip it off on the back. And then you can kind of manipulate it around with your fingers a little bit if you need to. But there we have our cute little double daisy for our ear wire, which I absolutely love. And then you just finish this off with a simple loop. So I'm just going to take the um, ear wire here, the bottom of the shank, and I'm going to take my chain nose plier right below the bottom wrap of those daisies, and I'm going to make a 90 degree bend outward away from the hook. And then I'm going to grab my, um, I've lost the word, my round, my round nose pliers, and I don't know, half an inch up, I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping and making a loop. And I'll keep going until I run out of wire. This is one really good way to make a simple loop. And then I'm going to kind of kick it back. Then I'm just going to take my flush cutter and cut off the extra tail. And so there, we, and then you can kind of put it on plane if you need to, mix it around a little bit. I'm going to open that loop sideways and just add my hoop that I created with my cute daisy chain on it and close up that ear wire loop. And there we have that adorable, whoops, I had it backwards, that adorable daisy chain hoop earring. Isn't that so much fun? Let me show you a couple other examples. I'm going to move this bead mat out of the way with my messy seed beads. <laughs> Um, here's one um, that I made. It's really the same technique you can see, but it's on just a very simple ear wire hoop. We do sell those findings. And here we have a different color palette with the teal, the kind of a periwinkle blue and the purple. And I used um, a yellow crystal in the middle rather than a fire polish bead. So those are really fun. And here's another one. I'm a big earring kind of person. And so I think I made these from memory wire. So you can take a piece of memory wire and just make a little hook on one side, make a little bend on the other side after you've done all your beading. And here's one with an even um, more blue palette. And you can change it to be whatever you want it to be. Okay. Short and sweet, folks, that was it. I hope you really enjoyed learning how to make these daisy hoop earrings. They are so much fun. Um, thank you for being with me here today. Make sure you're liking, you're subscribing, um, and you're spreading that video around. Share it around so other people have the experience. And if you missed any part of this video, it's okay. It's being recorded. And so, if um, you wait till the end of the video, you can go back to the beginning and watch it um, start to finish so you haven't missed anything. Okay, thank you so much. Make sure and watch for our next Facebook Live. It's going to be a mystery subject. Um, we'll see what we bring to you. It's always a lot of fun. I love you guys and I will see you next time.